Welcome to the Teachers on Fire podcast, where 21st century educators come to share, learn, and be inspired. We believe in the growth mindset, creativity, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and strategic uses of education technology. Our mission is to share news and views from teachers who are crushing it in the classroom and making a difference for learners everywhere. I'm your host, Tim Cavey. Let's jump into today's episode. Today I'm speaking with Sony Day. Sony describes herself as a teacher, mom, tech integrator, proud Texan, and Seesaw ambassador. Sony enjoys advocating for young learners and strives to have an innovator's mindset. Sony, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Are you ready to talk education? I am. Thanks for having me. Fabulous. Why don't you start by describing your current teaching or education situation? Sure. I am a second grade teacher in um, a little suburb north of Dallas. I shouldn't probably say it's little. It's one of the fastest growing um, cities in the country. Currently, it's Frisco, home of the Dallas Cowboys training facility. Our district is booming. And so we add new campuses constantly. My campus that I'm currently at is about to start our third year. So I'm really excited for that. We've kind of gotten through the initial craziness of opening a school and then kind of refining what we've done in our year two. So I feel like year three is going to be a really good one. This will be my 10th year teaching next year. I've taught kinder first and second, but it all started about 10 years ago um, in special education is where I started and spent the first five years there. Sony, why don't we start by going to that low moment, that that bleak experience that we've all faced. Tell us about one of those in your teaching or education career and then how you overcame it. Yeah. So my second year teaching was really, really difficult. My first year I had started off in just a resource classroom and on that campus, they had another um, special ed program that was more centralized and more self-contained, not totally, but pretty close. And I fell in love with it and was able to transfer into that program on a different campus my second year, but I had no idea some of the challenges that were going to come with that. (laughs) Um, I had a student who had autism or has autism and he was in fourth grade and parents had never really been told about some of his behaviors from their previous teacher. I know that can just be a difficult topic of conversation as it is. Mm -hmm. Um, But him being, you know, however old you are in fourth, what 10 and that never being a conversation that had been had before and me not knowing that I went into that conversation thinking it had been talked about and it hadn't, and it did not go over very well. And through a series of just unfortunate events, I guess you could say, um, the parents were pretty upset and they ended up filing a grievance against me and against my principal in the school. It went up to the superintendent and it was just, that's not the name you want to make for yourself as a second year teacher in a growing district. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so I was able to really see firsthand um, the need for documentation, not just Mm. in special education, but in education in general. Um, it turned out they were claiming things like I had not been communicating with them when in reality it was, they didn't want to hear what I was communicating. Hmm. And so everything got taken away. There was, you know, there's nothing on my certificate or, you know, there's no stains on anything, but, um, it was difficult. And I ended up having between my principal, my assistant principal, our behavior specialist for my program, my instructional facilitator for the program, and then a special ed director, I was getting observed daily, <laughs> just as like a, like watching me and making sure like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. And everyone believed I was, it was more of a, to go back to the parents and say, listen, Sony's doing what she's supposed to be doing. This is what, how we've trained her. And so through that, while having those, that many eyes on me was not fun. I got the best hands on training you right. could have ever asked for because I had people constantly in there saying, Hey, what about, have you tried this? And with all my students, not just that one. And so really I was able to grow as a teacher and my kids got things that they didn't normally get. It was really great experience just through a hardship though. What a story and what an experience to go through, as you said, just in your second year. And you know, yeah. one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that, that I hear in that story is the role of administrators and mentors. You know, I think back to my second year and, and many others, and I think often we actually, we actually have the opposite experience of almost no observation and very little mentorship. And so 
I guess the silver lining in that experience is just that you had those constant professional eyes on your work and you had those, those conversations around what you were doing. And I'm sure, although it was intense and painful, and I'm sure you would never want to go through that again. <laughs> um, I'm sure there, at the same time, there were a few positives that came out in terms of your professional growth. Absolutely. And one thing that I've been able to do as I've been able to mentor teachers since then is be able to say, you know, how much better is that for me to go through my second year Mm -hmm. than my 10th or 12th or 20th? Like I would much rather go through that early on than get, you know, quote, stuck in my ways and then think, well, then how many kids have I messed up throughout the years? You know, I'd much rather learn all those lessons early on. than Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to move on here, but you know, one, one more little point that occurs to me as well. I like your point about documentation. And I think uh, just as a note to teachers, man, email is in, in my estimation is really such a great way to go. You know, we can text parents, we can communicate with them in other ways, but email has that archival power. And I, it sounds Absolutely. like, yeah, it was, it was important in your situation. Yeah. Sony, what is it, moving to a brighter topic, what is it that really excites you about education today? What gets your motor running or ignites your passion in some way? Yeah, I'm really pumped for the social emotional learning component that's really taken, I feel like, education by storm recently. Everywhere I look on Twitter, every blog I read, it's everything is about relationships and pouring into the social and emotional side of kids, which I feel like we've kind of gotten away from, you know, Mm -hmm. we, I feel like my parents grew up in a generation where, you know, dinner was on the table every night and there were great family conversations and parents were in the lives of kids. And then there was my generation where parents were involved, but it was more, I felt like maybe through sports or like different extracurricular activities. And now everyone just got their phone in their hand. You know, I'm super (laughs) guilty of it myself. But I love this big push that we're um, having because, you know, there's so much going on in schools with safety and security. I really feel like it all ties together really well. I came across an article recently um, on EdSurge that talked about, um, I think it was Columbia University, if I remember correctly. And they were talking about um, schools that have invested in high quality social emotional learning um, instruction have received like an 11% return on their investment in that. And I'm not really familiar with exactly what that means, but I know that that's got to be pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, And then it goes on to talk about how when kids have had this SEO learning and all that, it talks about how there's an increased chance of, or there's a less of a chance of unemployment, divorce, Hmm. bad health, criminal behavior, going to prison, all these types of things. And, I mean, no one wants that for our kids. And so we've got to pour in at a young age. And what I'm super excited about is just recently, I think at the last board meeting, Frisco has done some amazing work and they've hired on extra testing coordinators for our district and 504 Hmm. coordinators so that our counselors can get back to doing their job of counseling students. And they did this big analysis of time management for our counselors. And by adding these, I think there's like 10 or 20 positions, something district-wide that they added, we're giving 27,000 minutes of counseling back for our kids. Mm. And I'm like, Mm. man, that is just incredible. And so I got to kind of brag on my district a little bit there because, (laughs) you know, we, we just can't do enough for our kids right now. And we've got to be pushing and letting them know they're cared for and that we have high expectations and we're not going to let them completely fail, but we're going to let them grapple and that's okay. Um, But we've got to give them these self-regulation strategies and teach them these things because it's not happening so much in the home anymore. And I say that as a mom, too, Mm -hmm. that I fail on that a lot of the time because I'm doing it all day at school (laughs) and I Mm -hmm. come home and I'm tired. and I don't always want to do it with my own kids. But, you know, big companies are wanting um, um, people to come and work for them that can communicate together and collaborate Mm -hmm. and, you know, this generation doesn't always know how to collaborate well. They just want their way all the time. And we've got to right. do okay for you not to get your way. And there's a respectful way to deal with that. Um, and we can't blow up every time that things don't go the way we wanted them to. There's going to be oopses in life. And you've got to be able to roll with the punches. Um, mm-hmm. And so I'm really excited for this whole push in schools right now. 
Love it. Love it. For anyone active on the in the Twitter sphere, if you're thinking about social emotional learning, keep an eye out for that hashtag SEL. And, you know, I've been thinking about this uh, this year as well in my master's studies, just the, and, and actually uh, getting into Dave Burgess's Teach Like a Pirate a little bit. Yes. He, he, he loves to focus on, man, just make it an experience, make it fun. Get back to the the excitement and the the he, he'll go ahead and say the entertainment value. But I think the point there is that kids have to feel safe. They have to feel secure. They have to feel happy. They have to feel that we believe in them. And if those things aren't there, they're not going to learn as well. So absolutely. Um, yeah, well said. Moving on to something outside of education, Sony, what's another area of passion and learning for you? I'm just a really big nerd, <laughs> and I just really like teaching. <laughs> sure. You know, I do have two little boys that keep me busy. Tanner will start kindergarten in the fall, and so I know that will be a bit of a shift in the family life. Um, you know, we we play baseball. We go swim a lot in the summer, you know, I'm trying to kind of just relax for the summertime and just kind of be with them, but it's hard. I caught myself Mm -hmm. reading teach like a pirate and lead like a pirate today. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) I need to put the books down for a little bit, focus on the kids, but they were having a blast, you know, building and all that stuff. But, um, I really do. I just really like school and that's kind of what my focus is on all the time. If it's not on my family. (laughs) Awesome. Well, that's a relevant pretty important area that you need to be learning in and so that's that's quite understandable now on the on the reading sony are you uh are are you a soft cover person or have you moved to the kindle you know i i I don't like reading on technology i don't know what it is it kind of hurts my eyes a little bit but i have gotten into the audio book a little bit we've been traveling a little bit this summer and I can't read when I drive because I makes well, not especially when I drive, when I'm writing and my husband's driving. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to read because it makes me nauseous, but I can yeah. listen. And so I have mm. been listening to a few things. So, um, but I just know I don't like to read on on my phone or on my Kindle or anything like that. It just, ugh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough. I, I love to check in with teachers to sort of hear where they are on that one. Yeah. Next- and I like to mark my books up too. Sometimes, yes, like if, especially yes. if it's a teacher book, I need to be marking it and highlighting, you know, tabbing things and all that. <laughs> Love it. I, I'm with you there. Next, Sony, share about a personal habit that contributes to your success. This might be at home or at work. What is it? What's one little thing that you do that to really add some fuel to your life? Um, I do check Twitter pretty frequently, um, even if it's just a quick scroll through and just kind of see if anything's popping out to me. Kind of the same people tend to pop up because they're either right. tweeting or getting retweeted multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> um, but one thing I've done, I did my master's program last year. And one thing I had to do was attend school board meetings. I think I, only had, I, think I was only supposed to attend just a handful maybe. But I've really kind of enjoyed going and kind of seeing that dynamic and kind of hearing more about what's happening from the people who are making the decisions for our district. And so whether I actually go or I listen in online, I try and kind of keep my ear to the ground there because hmm. there's so, because our, our district grows so fast, we're adding brand new teachers right and left. And some of these people coming straight out of school don't have a clue because I didn't have a clue <laughs> and about what's going on and what things mean and what's the trickle down going to be like. And so um, I've been going to more of those to kind of be a little bit more of the voice on campus to let people know, you know, when there's elections coming up, here's where you can find information or, you know, if you want to know my opinion, you know, shoot <laughs> me an email, my personal email account, and I'll be sh- glad to give you my opinion, <laughs> those types of things, just because I think it's important um, as taxpayers for us to be informed of what's happening in our district, but also I'm about to be a parent of a kid in this mm-hmm. school district. So not mm-hmm. only are things going to be affecting me as a teacher and as a taxpayer, but it's going to be affecting me as a parent. And so I really feel like that's really important to kind of be in tune with that. I think that's great. I think we need more teachers with their, their head in that area of policy and governance for sure. We're moving into some rapid fire recommendations now, Sony. So just take a minute. Give us a couple of your picks in each of these areas. We'll start at Twitter. Tell us about who we need to be following on Twitter. That's the number one place to plug into a vibrant PLN. So who do you recommend? 
Yes. Um, one of my, I have several. And um, one is Todd Nesloni at Tech Ninja Todd. He is awesome. He is a principal in Navasota, Texas, which is kind of the southern part outside of College Station where Texas A&M is. And he's fantastic. He also has authored a couple of books at this point. He's great. Aaron Hogan is a teacher in College Station, and he has a book called Shattering the Teacher Myth. That's um, actually in my Amazon cart as we speak. I haven't read it yet, but I've seen blips of it. And it looks amazing. Alice Keeler is great. Casey Bell for all the technology, everything. They're fantastic. I feel like there's constantly people popping up, but those are my, those are my <laughs> big ones. Um, George Kuro- Kuros, I can't forget him. Mm. I got to remember mm-hmm. him. He's phenomenal. He so. is. He is. Now, Casey Bell, is she from Texas as well? Yes. And I can't remember <laughs> what part of Texas she's from. But, right. man, there's a lot of good people coming out of Texas That's right now. They're right. representing us pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Next, the point is to an ed tech tool, one that you currently love using in your classroom or maybe your day-to-day work. Yeah, so I know Seesaw is a big one in the education world, but I have used it religiously, I feel like, for, I don't know, three, four years now. And it has completely transformed how I communicate with my parents I love it because it literally, as soon as my parents connect with it, and I have never had, in the four or five years I've been using it, I haven't ever had a parent who didn't connect, because even when they come into parent conferences, if they haven't in that October time frame, I'm like, hey, can I see your phone for a minute? Let me just hook it up for you. And they're like, <laughs> okay, because half the time they just don't really know what to do or you know, haven't made the time to do it. And so I'm like, if you don't mind, I'll just do it. And so I use that. And, you know, last year they added the activities tab. So I can kind of provide a Google classroom like feel um, Mm -hmm. for my second graders. And I do use Google classroom as well um, because I know they're going to use it third, fourth, fifth grade um, in our district. But for second grade, I really love this. And the exciting thing is, is next year, our campus has been chosen to pilot um, Seesaw for schools our curriculum and instruction department is actually paying for us to do it, which is an amazing thing because they don't pay for technology typically. Um, okay. And so they're really going to be um, bringing this out. And so we'll get to use the um, blogging component of it. And then we'll also be able to put in our essential standards that we feel like every student mm. has to leave our grade level with. We'll be able to track those and parents can see it at all times. Those are the ones we'll come back to over and over and over throughout the year. The issues I used to have with parent communication of like, oh, I didn't see that email. I can literally send my normal Friday email like I do through my email server. And then I can take all those attachments and drop them into Seesaw now. And now they have them there. Like parents can't come and say to me anymore, well, I didn't receive it because I can actually see that they saw it on Seesaw. <laughs> so, Busted. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm never disrespectful with it, but I can be like, oh, well. I, oh, I, I could have sworn that I saw that you saw it on Cecil. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe it was on there. And I'm like, yeah, it was. <laughs> um, but it's great because I don't have mm. to, you know, it's just made it so easy now. All right. Moving into books. Sony, tell us about one that you've been reading lately. And, and you already dropped a couple of references just from today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> give us a recommendation. Maybe it's one of those or, or another one. Yeah, anything Dave Bird just publishes, I feel like, is you can't go wrong with it. Um, I haven't found one so far, so that's always good. But George Kuros' Innovator Mindset is amazing. He's actually going to be our keynote at Convocation in August, and I am so excited to hear him speak. I just can barely wait till August, whatever it is, that he's coming. I'm almost done with Teach Like a Pirate. I started Lead Like a Pirate. My um, principal assistant, principal instructional coach, and myself are all four going to do not necessarily a book study. We're all going to read it here the second half of summer and then kind of take some of those ideas from those ladies and kind of use it next year as we drive our team leader meetings and stuff. And so that'll be really fun. Casey Bell's Shake Up Learning is Mm -hmm. on my nightstand. Um, And then there's multiple that are in my Amazon cart right now, just kind of waiting till I get these finished before I add to the stack. But I did see that on the 20th, which is what, in a couple of days, Jimmy Koss's Culturize is coming to audio. And Mm. so I'm super excited about that. So I'm going to take that on vacation with me next week. (laughs) Well, I actually just downloaded it this week. uh, The the Culturize book down to my Kindle. Sorry, oh, not, nice. on, not on the audiobook side, yet, oh, okay. but uh, it's on my Kindle. So I, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's, it's a good read so far. I'm loving it. Oh, good. 
we're into podcasts now. So for the commuters among us, give us a couple of podcasts that we should add to our list. Yes. Well, obviously, Teachers on Fire. I am a oh, fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I love Ditch That Textbook with Matt Miller, Google Teacher mm-hmm. Tribe, Kids Deserve It. Innovators Mindset actually has one, and they go through seasons. I think they did it, like, on a YouTube channel, and they converted it, I guess. I don't really know. But they're really cool because it's George Kuros and Katie Martin, and they have different people that come on and share of their thoughts of the book in different chapters. And so it's really it's a cool conversation, even though they've gone through the book several times with different people, you get different things out of it each time. And so mm-hmm. um, those are all really good. I'm constantly looking for more. So if anyone else <laughs> has any recommendations, I do have a little bit of a commute every morning when we are in school. So I'm constantly listening to something. <laughs> That's cool. I am too. And, you know, just uh, thinking about George and another guy, Trevor McKenzie, and, and maybe a few other authors, something I've noticed that they're starting this summer is these online book clubs where you can sort of interact and watch Facebook lives and I haven't experienced it yet, but it looks like something pretty cool for anyone yes. looking to. to have did, you seen th- that too? Yeah, I think I saw something on Innovators Mindset. As I, that's okay. the one I think, because someone else had tweeted out about it. That's joining um, our kindergarten team next year, and she had posted something on Twitter about, "Hey, is anyone else doing this? I saw this, and I'm like, you absolutely need to do this. You absolutely need to get the book." <laughs> Not just because he's coming, but because it's an amazing book and, you know, you're going to learn so much from it. But um, I do need, I might need to go back and kind of look into that a little bit. Last question, Sony. You're at the end of your day. You've got no energy left. The kids are in bed. You've planned all your lessons. You've marked all your papers or whatever it is that you've, you've got to work on. What is it that you're watching on Netflix right now? What can you recommend for us? So it's a little controversial. People have mixed feelings about this and I understand why, but I am really, I really enjoyed um, both seasons of 13 reasons why little personal side story in high school. I actually went through that. My high school boyfriend committed suicide uh, when I was Mm. 16, he was 17 Mm. and there was really no one around me, especially my age that could relate. But then there weren't any adults that I thought that could relate either because no one was coming to me saying, hey, I've been through this. You're going to get through this. It'll be okay." I just had, you know, people saying, I'm so sorry, which, well, yeah, everyone was so sorry. And Mm. no one really understood why. And he didn't go through the things that are portrayed in the show. But I know there are millions of kids out there that go through exactly what the show portrays. And I felt like they did a really good job of bringing light to the taboo topics that we just don't talk about. Mm -hmm. And so I I just felt, I I hope that there are kids out there who have watched it with parents and that parents have gone, Oh my gosh, these kids are going through things that we haven't necessarily gone through as kids, but I need to listen. And it goes back to that social emotional learning component of, you know, at home, we've got to be listening to our kids. We just have Mm -hmm. to, because They might not be saying it with their words, but they're asking for help with their actions or their inactions. And just Mm. this week on Facebook, one of the moms, I had her kid in class last year. She posted something about having now watched season one and two. I feel like I need to ask every single teenager how they're doing and really take a minute to listen to them. And Mm. I just thought that was so powerful because her oldest will be in third grade. So he's not quite to that point. But even when I was in seventh grade, there was a kid who, uh, or I was in eighth grade and he was in seventh grade and he had committed suicide at our school after school one day. And so right after wow. there was that, and then there was my boyfriend and not long after my high school boyfriend had committed suicide, we had two more later that year. His was November. So later that year, there were two more at my school and, cool. you know, you, you just don't know, you don't know what's happening inside the walls of someone's home or inside the walls of someone's head even. And so we've just really got to pay attention. And so I felt like they did a really good job with that show and bringing light to topics that are not fun to talk about at all. That was a great summary and you're, you're certainly intriguing me. I definitely want to take a closer look at that series. I've been thinking, obviously we've all been thinking a little bit more about suicide lately with a couple of very high profile suicides. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in a way it's a good time to, I don't want to say have mental health issues. That's never a nice thing, but but we are at a place where hopefully as a society, we're talking about these things. There's, there's less stigma around them. And, you know, we realize that we're all on a, on a journey and depression is, 
is a very real construct or, or sorry, not a construct or a very real yeah. <laughs> form of, of affliction, I guess we could call it. And yeah, I think the more education we're doing, the, the more conversations we're having, the better we'll all be. Absolutely. Sony, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. What is the best way for people to follow you and get to know your content a little bit better? Yeah, the best way is I'm on Twitter and it's at Days Mrs. Mrs. Day was taken. So it's Days, D A Y S M R S. That's the best way to find me. That simple, nice and easy, and easy to remember. Thank you so much again. And Sony, you're on summer break. Hope it's a wonderful one and hope it's refreshing for you and you end up coming back in the fall full of energy and fresh ideas. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, take care. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Teachers on Fire, where teachers come to share, learn, and be inspired. Please subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review on iTunes, and follow us on Twitter at Teachers on Fire. I'm your host, Tim Cavey, saying goodbye for now, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Teachers on Fire podcast.